If you're headed on the waterways or the roadways for this holiday season, Trooper Bob Barris with ABC News 4 has some tips for you for this edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close-Ups on Facebook. Trooper Bob Barris, welcome back to Quentin's Close-Ups. Hey, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here with you. Likewise, obviously, you're ABC News Force traffic safety expert and, of course, a former uh, South Carolina Highway Patro uh, State Patrolman. I know, obviously, since this is the last week in 2022, the South Carolina Highway Patrol will have troops uh, all across state this coming uh, New Year's uh, weekend. What's that process like? You know, pretty much everybody works um, as far as I mean, pretty. This is actually probably goes for all law enforcement, but especially for patrol, especially when I was with them for 25 years is everybody's working from the colonel all the way down to the newest trooper that just graduated out of the academy, uh, you know, that Friday before or a couple of Fridays ago. It, it really calls for all hands on deck because this is a holiday that everybody celebrates. People know that you're going to go out, you're going to go out drinking. That's what, that's what New Year's about, bringing in the new year. But fortunately, people forget about it as far as drinking and driving, and, and they think it doesn't apply to them. And so when I was on the patrol, you know, we, we held road checks, driver's license checkpoints, not just at one spot, but you might see the same set of troopers at two or three different spots because they, they get up and move and go to different areas. So uh, it, 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 you're really, honestly, you're really, you're really a fool if you go out there drinking and driving, especially on that day. Any day, you're not supposed to, regardless, but especially that day, you know everybody's going to be out there. So don't take that chance. And I know a lot of people want to celebrate the, this holiday weekend, as you mentioned, about while going out and about. How should they do that responsibly? Well, have a plan in place. We already know if you're going out to celebrate, I stay home New Year's. I, I don't go out. Right. But, and, the, and the thing about it is, it's not that I don't want to celebrate. I want to get hit. I don't, I don't want something to happen to me. I, I, I worry about my family I worry, because I know that night, People go out, and I've seen it over 25 years, and, and you know, people always ask me, well, why is the patrol out there? How come they can't slow people down? You know, people speeding on the interstate. Well, they've been trying to slow people down since like 1933. It, it, ain't, it ain't happened. You know, the same thing with DUI. You know, I spoke to the patrol not too long ago, a couple of weeks ago, and they told me that even though this pandemic was going on, people's... Um, Speed is increasing when they're stopping these cars. They're stopping them in, in the triple digits. And DUIs had no effect, or COVID had no effect on these DUIs. People are still out there drinking like it was before the pandemic. So it's a very important topic. People are losing their lives. It, it, people need to take this seriously. You know, when you do go out, have a plan in place. Know where you're going to go. Know how you're going to get home before you even leave. You still have a couple more days to make that. Um, Put your plans together. You know where you're gonna, what you're gonna wear, and where you're gonna go. Have a plan how you can get home. That's easy as it is. I don't care what you drink or how much you have to drink, but don't get behind the wheel when you do it. Absolutely. And, and, okay. How will this new variant, obviously Omicron, in your mind, make the job, the troopers' job, that is, more difficult? Well, well troopers are gonna be out there. They're gonna do. You know, they, they're wearing their masks. I'm sure, and, and they're taking their precautions. But they have a job to do. They have. In accidents to investigate or collisions to investigate, they, and they're going to get these drunk drivers off the roadway. Years ago, you know, when I was a young trooper, you actually drove around looking for a drunk driver, looking for somebody swerving or going 25 in the 70 or 70 in the 25. So you had to go out, but now everybody has a cell phone. The people report this stuff. They're, they're, everybody's a policeman. So I encourage everyone if you see somebody, a reckless driver, aggressive driver, or what you suspect to be a drunk driver, dial star HP, star 47. It's a free call to the local dispatch center. Tell them why we need to get that driver off the roadway. Why, well, tell us what that driver is doing. Run the tag. Or not run the tag, but you know, give us the, give it the Howard Patrol the tag number, description yeah. of vehicle, description of travel, and uh, find out, you know, get that drunk driver off the roadway. Right, absolutely. And, and what are the total numbers of accidents and collisions around this holiday weekend? You know, I'm not with the patrol anymore, so I'm not privy to that information right off the top of my head. But I can tell you right now they have over the state has over a thousand fatalities in South Carolina, over a thousand. And we still have more days left to go into the, before the new year. 
you know, as far as DUI arrests, when I was leaving the patrol, we, they had just the highway patrol itself had like over 12,000 DUI arrests a year. That's not even counting other agencies. So this is a problem. The people are out there doing it. If they're arresting over 12,000 people, that's telling me like 40 or 50,000 people are doing it. Those are the ones that just got caught. Right, right exactly right. And in your time, uh, Trooper Bob, on the highway patrol, what, what county was the most as far as arrests and collisions and accidents? You know, I, I always thought, at least the, the bigger counties going to have a little more activity than the smaller counties. But we just have to be just as vigilant. We, we want I want to make sure if you live in Upper St. George, you get home just as good and, and as safely as somebody in Charleston County does. The key is, what people don't realize is you see these commercials of people celebrating, they're at the bar, they're having a good time, the ball's dropping. That's what they see on TV, but they don't see the troopers in the corners knocking on these families' doors, telling their loved ones not to come home. I'm going to tell you, that will change your life forever. I might not remember a lot of things in my life. You know, I'm, I've lived a long life already, 50 years old, right? I don't remember a lot of things, especially as a kid, but I remember every house I've been to because when you ring that doorbell, I know that in 30 seconds, when these people answer the door, I'm going to alter their lives. and Their lives would never, ever be the same when you deliver that message. Same goes for that driver. Also, you go out there, you kill somebody, you're looking at up to 25 years in prison per person. I don't know anybody rides around by themselves on a New Year's Eve. You kill three people in the car, you're looking at up to 75 years. You get convicted of a DUI also, that will stand on your driving record forever. It will never, ever come off. It will be on your driving record. So when you try to get this new job you always wanted, that new job might not pay that high-risk insurance for you to drive their company vehicle. You know what? They've got a lot of people behind them that have a clear driving record that they're going to hire. They're not even going to deal with you. So it's going to affect you, not just the next day, but in the long run also. Absolutely. And there are always impaired driving violations or drivers not wearing your seatbelts, as you know. Uh, how many violations are typically given out and what generally will a patrol or even highway patrolmen do to educate drivers about the importance of actually wearing a seatbelt? Well, it, it important is it, it, two, there's two things. There's the educational side and the enforcement side to it. Educational side is just telling you, look, wear your seatbelt. I can tell you in 25 years, I've never unbuckled a dead person. I've been to over 3,000 wrecks I've worked myself, but I've never taken a seatbelt off a dead person. That's just me. But I can tell you, I've written a lot of tickets for people not buckling up. It's the easiest thing to do. It takes you two seconds. It doesn't cost you any money. It's a good chance to go save your life. I always wear my seatbelt because I know what it's gonna, what's going to happen if I don't wear my seatbelt. I don't meet a lot of people out in town that were ejected out of a car and said, hey, I was ejected out of a car. You don't see many people like that. Usually the cars roll on top of them or they don't make it. But I've seen a lot of people that have been in a crash that tell me, hey, I've been in a crash. I have a seatbelt on. You know, I, I, I might have had some, you know, some, some, maybe some redness across my shoulder or something, but they made it. They survived the crash. It's the easiest thing to do. It's, why not do it? Yes, indeed. Absolutely. And if someone goes and gets into a jam on a highway or the interstate, who should they call? They can call Star HP, Star 47. If, if, you, if you forget that, you can still call 911. The biggest thing is know if there are any injuries. If there are injuries, don't even move the vehicle. Um, in some of these little fender bender collisions, you can move the vehicle off to the right side of the road if there are no injuries. But here's the thing. Call 911 or call Star HP. Report the crash. Let them know if they need an ambulance for anybody. If they do, let them know, you know, how many people are hurt or, or uh, let, let the biggest thing is your location. Know where you are right. and uh, and tell them what you're seeing and what, what you're witnessing and, and uh, let them know if you're in the lane of travel, you're on the interstate so they can get um, some help to you quickly. Absolutely. And I know, obviously, you've, you've been out of the force for a while now, but when exactly do the state troopers see a spike in the number of traffic fatalities on the roadway? Well, you know, typically and historically, there's, there's two times a year. Number one is during the 100 deadly days of summer. That goes from, you know, from Memorial Day to Labor Day. They typically see a spike then because people are outside. 
People are, they're not cooped up in their house like they are in the wintertime, but they're also on the waterways. They're going on the boats. They're going to picnics. They're riding motorcycles. They're walking around. That's normally when they see the 100 daily days, and that's why they call it that. And then other times is during the, I'm going I'm to say from Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, why you got all these parties, all the stuff going on, all this activity. And then, you know, just now you got, you got, um, you got New Year's coming up. Right. And, and on top of that, what do people do in New Year's? They light off fireworks. They're not a drunk and mess with fireworks. So, you know, now you're going to get the, the hospitals have enough going on right now with enough COVID and all this other stuff. Don't add to it. Absolutely. And, and what is the biggest difference about public safety from when you were on the force to now obviously off the force? Well, from what I see is uh, right now, it's, you know, one thing I miss, I'm going to tell you, one thing I do miss is involvement in the community. You know, back in the, when I was a young trooper, I was assigned to Dorchester County. And so you were everywhere. I mean, you stopped at the bank, you stopped at these little stores in the country, and you got out and you talked to people, you know, and, and you might have bought somebody a hot dog and you just, and you sat there and talked to them and they told you what's going on. And a lot of times, People would tell me, hey, I heard this guy stole that car. This guy did this. Right. But now you, th these guys have so much area to cover with what seems like with less people. You know, they're not just covering, for example, in the area I work, they're not just covering Dorchester County. They're covering Politan and Dorchester County. And you're in going back and forth. And, you know, there might be just one or two troopers working during the day covering two big counties. So you're not getting out to the communities and, and talking to these people like you used to back in the day. So I know they miss it because um, I've talked to several of them about it. And, and I think it's that's the important puzzle is getting out there and connecting with the community because I don't care how smart you are. You're not going to solve every problem if, if the people aren't working with you. Oh, absolutely. And you mentioned something that was very significant that I wanted to ask you about, the waterways. How should people drink responsibly on the waterways? Well, I mean, if you if you uh, if you're out on the water, well, the, the days are nice, so some people might be on the boats. But know that just like in the car, there's a DUI driving under the influence. There's a BUI boating under the influence. There's actually a FUI flying under the influence. So if you get on the plane, there's no difference versus being on the boat and being responsible for your passengers too. You want to make sure you're not impaired. Boating is just as dangerous as a vehicle. You know, you got those. Shallow coastal waterways that people don't realize. You know, if you don't know where you are, you know, on that nautical chart, you could run aground, you can hit something and hit a pylon. And you know, when you start drinking and it's nighttime and you're not aware of your surroundings, you just think of water. But there's a lot of things that'll stop your boat and get people to, you know, and get, you can get seriously hurt. Absolutely. And one last time, Troop Bob, what are tips? What tips do would you give to the average viewer? Sure. Listen have a plan in place. There's, there's so many ways that you can get home. Number one, if you're going to somebody's residence, you can have a, you ride a cab or a ride share company, have a friend that you're going with that doesn't drink, have them bring you home, have them responsible. Everybody has a cell phone. Put, put your number uh, for friend's number and say, look, if I really need you, can I call you? If they're a true friend, they're going to come get you. They're not going to put you, let you drive home on the roadway. And know if you're hosting a party, if somebody leaves your residence drunk and kills somebody and you're hosting a party, you're providing alcohol and you just let somebody go, especially how many times you've been somewhere and people say you're drinking just along with the guy and then you're looking at them and they're looking at you and you're like, hey, do I look drunk? You've been drinking with them all night. Why are you asking the guy you're drinking with all night? You look drunk. If you have to ask yourself that, then yes, the answer is yes. But you could be held liable if you leave somebody's house or you're hosting a party, you could get sued because you let that person go knowing that person was drunk and they left your house and then something happened. So a lot of responsibility on a New Year's Eve. It's just like every night. Look, don't go out there and do it. Like I said, the first thing I told you is I don't care what you drink or how much you have to drink. But don't put yourself behind the wheel. We have enough stuff going on the roadways that we got to deal with, but nobody wants... Everybody regrets drinking and driving. Trust me, if you talk to these people that get in a wreck, you have some of these families only have one car in their family. Here you go, crash the car. Now your insurance is higher. You got to pay the SR22 for three years. Now it puts a burden on your kids. You're, you used to use that car to take them to school. You're, you know, it's just, it, it, it's, it doesn't go well. So please 
have a plan in place. I wish everyone a happy new year, especially you, Quentin. Thank you. Make the right choices behind the wheel, and let's all uh, go into the new year and uh, continue every other new year safely. Because remember now, some families won't get a family member going into the new year because they're taken by a drunk driver. Sadly, very sad. Uh, one last question. What are the other things that the state troopers, besides obviously DUI and you know accidents and collisions, what are the other things that they have to deal with during the holiday weekend? Well, I mean, lots of crashes. They're also dealing with people traveling, you know, broken down cars. Um, if you're traveling, I always tell this, every time I talk to you uh, on the news, I always mention this. Check your spare tire. A lot of people have cars, don't even ever look at a spare tire. I was on the side of the road hundreds of times. I'm trying to help somebody change their tire because they don't know how, but they don't even have a spare tire. They never checked when they bought the used car or the spare tire is flat or they don't have a jack. So now's a good time to go in your glove box, get your owner's manual, find out everything you need for your vehicle because not all jacks fit the same cars. You know, they're, they're assigned that the rim and tire is just for your car. Matter of fact, I've ran through that so much that I even bought me a floor jack that you see in the mechanic shop. I kept it in the trunk of my patrol car because yeah. people didn't have the right parts and stuff. So I had a four-way and a floor jack. But have, have, make sure your vehicle's in good working condition. That, that'll help the troopers out. We also have the Shep units out there. Uh, they, they help you if you run out of gas or if you, you, know, if you break down. But, um, you know, troopers are dealing with a lot of things. They're dealing with crashes, broken down vehicles. They're dealing with... Um, you know, drunk drivers, aggressive drivers, especially speeding, you see it all the time. So they got their hands full. So, uh, you know, let's, let's, let's help them out. And again, if you see somebody that needs to be off the roadway that you think it's impaired or is an aggressive driver, pick up the phone and dial Star HP. ABC News Force traffic safety expert, Bob Barris. Thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome back to Quentin's Close Ups. Thank you very much. Happy New Year to you, Quentin. Likewise.